Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly. I'm a mixed media artist who specializes in gouache paint, ink work, and sometimes I do digital painting. So I did a contest. It's a pet portrait contest from the company Trakel. I believe is how you pronounce it, Trakel Art Supplies. Basically, all you had to do is you had to purchase this wood panel and use its shape to create a unique pet portrait of your pet and you can basically submit any amount of times you want you just have to purchase the board and your confirmation order number is how you're able to submit your contest entry i was scrolling through instagram and i saw an ad for it and i was like i want to do that i've been doing a lot more animal paintings lately and i really want to branch that out and really dive even deeper into this whole nature themed artwork <laughs> I want to incorporate animals a lot more into my artwork, so I was like, you know what? I have two paintings of possums. I have one painting of a raccoon. I have a painting of a bat. I would like to have paintings of my pets. I want to be able to have, you know, a fireplace one day and have some bougie paintings of my dog and my gecko. Hello. So I took this as an interior design opportunity. Because there's a deadline, I know that I'm going to create the these things like i'm not going to push this off into the painting graveyard and i figured this would be a great opportunity for me to finally finally paint my pets so i purchased two boards one to do a portrait of my dog luna who is a wheaton terrier in october she's going to be seven years old Everyone's always shocked when I tell them that. If you look up anything about their breed, they're considered a forever puppy. They're insane. Um, <laughs> and Luna is not the exception to the rule. And the second one is going to be for my orange leopard gecko named Cheeto, who is a very adventurous, energetic guy. Let's get into the process of the portrait of Luna. I'm starting both of the boards with Daniel Smith watercolor ground in the shade Mars Black. That's why I used to prime the wooden panel for gouache and watercolor. It is really absorbent, it's perfect. You can also use it to paint on glass or plastic for watercolor and gouache. I'm using a light blue watercolor pencil from the brand Derwent. I use these all the time. I usually use them for the underpainting portion of the painting process, but because this is such a detailed painting, I kind of just used it so that I could see where Luna's fur starts and stops and where the intricate lines start for the background with the spider web and the detailed window and all that jazz. It just helps me to distinguish different areas of the painting. I also just used it to outline because when I transferred the sketch onto the board, the graphite paper did not reflect as much as regular graphite does against black, so it was very hard for me to see the outline, so this just kind of helped to establish the sketch again so it's easier for me to see it. I chose blue because the whole painting is going to be backlit from moonlight. Moonlight tends to be very teal and soft and I thought that adding this as just the underneath sketch color that's going to blend in with the gouache will just add a tint of that blue throughout the whole piece. I mixed together a beige color with my gouache paint. By the way, I'm using the brand M. Graham and Company. M. Graham and Company. Their gouache paint and watercolors are everything. They are beautiful. I, I feel like I should do an entire video dedicated on comparing them to other gouache paint because I'm, I'm being dead serious. They're so good. I love them. Anyways, I mixed together a beige color. I really wanted to get a sense of the lighting, so instead of doing the darkest darks first, since the canvas is already black, I decided to do the exact opposite of what I'd normally do, and I went in with the color blocking areas that are going to be hit by the moonlight first. So I'm really trying to establish the sense of light and how it's contouring Luna. And since the canvas is already black, going with one of the lightest general colors for the highlighted areas is an easy way to like carve that out really fast. So I established the light source by first putting in that beige color on the hairs on the back of her head, how the light kind of bends around her ears, 
showing those little flyaway fluffies around her neck. Also how the light would look on her eyebrows. <laughs> I, I really just used that to immediately carve out the shape of this portrait. Because her back is facing a window and she's looking into a room, inside the room there's going to be a warmer, dimmer light source. So the fur that's right in front of her face, that's the furthest away from the light coming from the window, that's going to be a lot more golden and have a lot more red tones to it, whereas the fur that's contouring the shape of her portrait, specifically around her ears, the top of her head, those are going to get a lot more blue teal lighting from the moon, and I'm really going to add a lot more layers of that. For now, I added an overlay of teal using that same blue watercolor pencil, and I blended that out. I'm going to add so many paint layers where I'm going to really build up that blue, but I like having very subtle gradients, so I like to slowly build that up with each paint layer of gouache paint I do. So for now, it's very subtle, but the more layers and detail I put into the piece, the more that's really going to stand out. I'm layering because I want there to be a very smooth gradient, so I'm not going to just go in with that teal color right away. You know what I mean? It has to build up with each layer from beige to teal. On the fur clumps that are closest to the interior warm lighting that the viewer can't see, <laughs> I am adding a lot more red and orange to Luna's fur in those areas. Specifically, it's going to be more around her beard, her chin, her chest, her eyebrows underneath, the really long eyebrow hairs that are catching most of the moonlight, the fronts of her ears, and things like that. And of course, as I keep going, I'm introducing more of that blue light with each layer to create a very smooth gradient with the gouache paint. With each layer, I'm repeating a lot of the same stuff. I'm just getting more specific and precise with my placement with each layer because with each layer you're going to get a little bit more detailed. It's kind of like when you're starting with a reference photo that's very blurry and with each layer it becomes more and more clear. To blend out all of the moonlight I just placed, I'm using a smaller brush that's damp to blend that all out because it's gotten to the point of detail where I need to get more specific and precise, so a smaller brush is needed. Side note, I know it's getting lost amongst all of the floof, but yes, those are devil horns I added on Luna's portrait. As I said earlier, she is insane. She She's a good girl, but you know what? She's just very crazy. Wheaton Terriers are very high energy dogs. They're also very independent thinkers. Luna is, she has so much personality, but one thing I love about Wheaton Terriers is even though they're mis mischievous? Or is it mischievous? I don't know even though they're very high energy, they're actually really good family dogs. Luna loves babies and puppies, She loves she, but she loves babies. So yeah, I highly recommend, if you're thinking about getting a family dog looking into the Wheaton Terrier, if you are a very active person, I walk my dog bare minimum an hour every day in the morning, and then in the evening she gets a little stroll, maybe even another long walk. I She has a lot of energy and People think she's hyper now, but they did not see her when she was a puppy. Let me tell ya. Let me tell ya. Okay? Very smart dog. I accidentally teach her stuff. She is so smart. I remember um, a couple years ago during Christmas, I got some jingle bells for the door. So every time I opened the door, there was like little jingle bells because Christmas, whatever. And I was too lazy to, you know how you leave the Christmas tree up until like February and it's like, okay, we gotta take this down. Well, I did that with the rest of my decorations and the jingle bells were still on the door. Luna learned, I we did not teach her this at all, but she used that bell to say like, I have to go to the bathroom. And she learned that on her own when she was like five, I would say. 
Yeah, really smart dogs. She learned that she knew we were gonna go for a walk when she heard me start using the sunscreen spray during car rides. She knew when we were near a Starbucks. I am not even kidding, you guys. She, she we stopped giving her the pop cups because there's too much sugar in them. But when we go by Starbucks, she gets excited because she knows. She knows that that's the place that gives you the whipped cream, right? Long story short, Luna is very smart. She's just an opportunist, I would say. So I gave her little devil horns. I also wanted to show her crooked teeth. My dog has crooked teeth. I don't know why. Um, they've always been like that. They've always been crowded to, with two in the front kind of projecting out a little. And one of them is missing now because when she was a puppy, I think she was playing tug of war really hard and got her tooth damaged and it wound up needed, needing to be removed. But I, I love her teeth. <laughs> They're so funny. <laughs> I put a ribbon around her neck. Um, a lot of her collars, I get ones with bows on them. But actually a lot of the time when we're at just laying around the house, she doesn't even wear her collar. Um, she just looks so cute with a little bow, doesn't she? Little goth princess. And I have her placed in front of an antique window of my dreams. I hope that one day my future house has beautiful ornate windows like this. I'm going to fill in that awkward round space on this wood panel shape. I'm filling out those sides with spider webs. And then the window is kind of arching up to fill in the top space of that rectangle. And then at the bottom, I'm going to have her name in a banner. I like doing a lot of banners in my work. It incorporates some cross hatching. I like a more mixed media kind of look to things, combining paintings and ink work and stuff like that. So you probably noticed that I've been adding a lot of white around the portrait, concentrated mostly on the perimeter of Luna's portrait. I had all the colors established, but I felt like the contrast wasn't intense enough for my liking. I like really high contrast images. So I'm adding a lot more titanium white around the perimeter of the portrait. I'm also using it to sculpt out little clumps of fur to give more of a three-dimensional aspect instead of just a messy, generalized, furry chest and neck. I'm making sure that I'm viewing this as a 3D object that is going to be her neck and chest are rounded coming towards you and I really accentuate that by showing the perspective of each of the fur clumps rotating and coming towards you and the light catching it differently because it's going around a rounded object by that window. I'm doing that same thing around the fur on her cheeks. This part was really difficult because dogs' cheeks aren't very pronounced. They're not really noticeable unless you have a short hair or hairless dog. My dog has a lot of hair. Side note, she doesn't shed. I know, it's so awesome. But her cheekbones aren't really noticeable. I usually just see layers of clumps of fur around her face and I really used the titanium white to accentuate that so I just did little almost like curtains of fur under her eyes. I'm going a little bit further into the details because I'm currently at that stage where I'm getting more specific Right now, I am blending out those gradients around her eyes. She has this natural eyeliner appearance to her eyes where the skin is darker and as her hair grows out of there, it's kind of like this dark brown to red to blonde. So I'm just adjusting that gradient. I also added some more orange watercolor pencils into her eyes to give that pool of honey effect that brown eyes usually have. I'm also working on that gradient, very similar to what I did around the eyes. I'm doing that same thing around the nose with a burnt umber colored watercolor pencil to really make more specific 
fur strands. I'm also using that Burnt Umber watercolor pencil to shade layers in between the fur clumps around Luna's face. I also used a watercolor pencil that was a coppery color, and I used that in areas in between the highlights and shadows, more like the mid-tone areas, for the fur that is closest to the indoor warmer lighting. Once I applied all of that watercolor pencil that just slightly adjusts the tones and colors that I'm seeing, I go in with a wet brush, a very fine point brush, and I blend that all out into the gouache paint. I repeat this process a few times because what I'm doing here is creating a sense of form around each clump of fur that I previously established within the gouache paint. This is how I get that high contrast detailed look within the fur. I really pay a lot of attention to the gradients that build up before doing the super fine details like doing little flyaway pieces of fur because the more you really focus on the form before applying those fine details, the more three-dimensional and real it feels. And you don't have to rely so much on so many tiny pieces of fine, fine detail. If the form isn't established and it doesn't feel three-dimensional, it can give this weird sense of, despite it being really detailed, it'll still feel flat. And I really don't want that. I really want this to feel three-dimensional and I'm focusing a lot on how the light bends around each clump of fur before I get into the super fine, minute details. Okay, so next what I'm doing is I am focusing a lot more of my attention onto the back window. And what I'm doing is I'm getting a, I think this is cobalt blue. I am editing this far into the future. I had this video done halfway <laughs> and then the holidays happened. And then I was like, ooh, I don't have time. So now I'm editing it, which is cool. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so yeah, I kind of forget which uh, pigment I use for this, but it's I'm pretty sure it's cobalt blue, okay? And it's M. Graham and Company watercolor paints. And I'm doing a wash of that in the background where the window glass is. And I plan on having a night sky in the background, obviously with the moonlight and all that jazz. And from bottom to the top, it's going to get dark and then to light. So it's going to overall have this really deep midnight blue effect, but I'm going to have a slight gradient as it goes higher and higher up to the window until it reaches the moon. And obviously the moonlight is gonna have its moment with a bunch of like silvery light around it. Yeah. I apologize for any echoing going on. I have a new studio space and it is what it is. Anyways, uh, right now what I'm doing in this video, while I'm letting the background dry, I'm going in with some black gouache paint and I'm just deepening up the darkest darks 
across the whole portrait. I added some more black around the nose where there's going to be a lot more uh, shadows going on underneath the reflected light on the nose and inside the nostrils, any wrinkles in that bow tie Luna is wearing, and I'm also touching up her natural eyeliner, you know, uh, around her eyes. I'm also adding some more black around the spider webs because some of that watercolor paint or watercolor pencils, it got smeared a little bit and I wanted a perfect velvety background. So I just further enriched that black by carving out the details around the spider web structure with just the gouache paint. With a fine detailed brush, I am using a very light teal gouache color with some titanium white and a little bit of blue added into it and I just used that to create a rim light around the window ledges. Then I'm using that same color to add highlights and structure to the bow. Once I even that out, meaning I use a damp detail brush to smooth out those edges of that paint I just blocked in um, to blend that into the base color of the bow, I then go back in to further enhance the high points of highlights because this is a satin bow and if you look at a lot of satin materials, they have a very glossy appearance to them and that's just what I'm trying to mimic here. Off camera, I blocked in the devil horns with a kind of taupe gray color. And in a minute, you'll see me use that same highlight teal color I've been using for the satin bow and the window ledges and the rim light around the fur. I'm going in and creating a rim light around the devil horns as well. And this just gives that satiny, glossy appearance 
if you look at horns in general, they're not super, super glossy, but they definitely have some specularity to them where, you know, like our fingernails kind of. It's not super glossy, but they definitely catch some light and have highlights on them. And I'm just trying to recreate that here. Because the devil horns are protruding out and they're closest to the window and closest to the moonlight, they're going to get a lot more of that rim light that's teal colored right there. So I'm really enhancing that right there. Once I have the line with that teal color blocked out, I go in with a very damp brush, almost dry, just barely wet, literally just dip it in a water drop, I'm not kidding, and blot it off. I very gently just feather out the edges of those colors I just blocked in and that is what helps the gouache create a smooth gradient is just lightly feathering the edges with a very damp brush. Then I'm going in and I'm adding some spare hairs around what am I what am I saying? Flyaways, little little fur flyaways around the devil horns to make them look more embedded into her head with the fur around it. And I'm also adding a highlight to give a domed appearance to the devil horns, like they're protruding out towards you. But with that highlight, it's a lot warmer toned. It's a lighter version of that taupe color I used to color block the basic shape to begin with. And because it's warmer, it gives us a sense of that warmer light that is in front of Luna's face instead of that teal silvery kind of lighting going on from behind from the moonlight. I know, very, very tricky with multiple light sources. I don't know why I do this to myself. I literally choose ideas all the time that have multiple light sources and it's exhausting, but it's worth it because it looks super cool. I'm also adding that indoor lighting as a little highlight uh, into the center bottom portion of her iris and again just going back in adding some more super fine details this is the fun part where you have a lot of that form really established and you can add texture with these really super fine details With the banner, I carved out the highest point of highlight, just like I did in the beginning with Luna's portrait. I used a beige color for the high points of highlight, and I'm feathering that out as they concave into the ripples of the banner. And I'm just building up the um, opacity with that paint and carving out those letters as well. All right, so it looks like we're at the end of the video, and I just wanted to say I am so sorry for not posting <laughs> for a long time. I was going through it. I still am, but I'm trying to get it together. I just moved um, studio spaces, so I, I, well, I didn't have a studio space to begin with. What I had before was my desk next to my gecko tank. Yeah, I had a little corner. <laughs> Now I have a shared studio space with other artists at a studio called Black Barn Fine Art Studio. Definitely take a look at their Instagram if you are interested. And in Washington State, we are going to hold some open house events amongst other workshops and things like that. So yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, I apologize for the echo in here. Again, trying to get my life together Haha, <laughs> aren't we all? Aren't we all though? Yeah. Let's let's normalize the fact that Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, I'm going to start recording another video um and editing and uh, my hope for this year is to be more consistent with social media. I do have a job, like a job job I teach at a college. Um I, I teach painting classes in real life, so that is taking up a lot of my time, but I do want to definitely create some better content 
on here and my other platforms. So I'm just trying to make that a goal this year to be a bit more consistent. I'm trying to be realistic with myself though with everything I'm trying to balance out in life. So bear with me. Thank you for your patience. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. I get it. Um, <laughs> Uh, and thank you for supporting my channel so much. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video whenever that is. I really hope it's next week. Uh, hopefully. Yeah. All right. Bye.